<laughs> well done, love. You might recognise this room. Uh, this is room number one of the Great Coach House project. And this is what we have to finish uh, this autumn so that we can move in here. And although we've made great strides with the panelling and with the plastering, um, we've still got to finish them, but we know what we're doing. One of the big obstacles is the bathroom. Now, I have been in discussion with our Patreons, who are a bunch of very wise people with great taste, for about a year now about what to do with this bathroom. Because it's quite small and it's got the beautiful stone wall and then just plasterboard around the outside. And we're going to have a bathtub here, we have a three quarter size bathtub, a sink here and a toilet there. And we are trying to decide um, how much tiling to do in here and one of the things that it depends upon is what style of tiles we're doing When we first started filming for the TV show Escape to the Chateau DIY, now Chateau DIY, I had this brilliant idea. And it came from actually watching another episode of it where Rebecca from Chateau de la Rouche did a beautiful tile splashback in a renovation of something for a bathroom. I think it was a, an old sink table. And she told me, well, she told me, she told all of us on the TV, uh, that she had splashed out on some handmade tiles that were really pretty and they were something like 10 euros each and I just sat there and I thought 10 euros for a tile and I um, extrapolated that out to how many bathrooms we're going to do here which is about 14 and I thought I'm going to have to choose between either having those mass-produced completely flat white ones um, in every bathroom and being able to actually afford them or being bankrupted by beautiful tiles. <laughs> and I love bathrooms and I really, really want to have them as a beautiful space. And because we're trying to fit them into an old building, a lot of them are gonna be quite small. So I decided on the basis of no pottery experience whatsoever to buy a kiln and make my own tiles. Now, I think the process of just buying the kiln means I can't get out of it because it's quite a significant investment. But I did average it out. I worked out how many tiles I'd need for each bathroom, how much a kiln cost and how much I thought it would cost to make my own tiles. And effectively, what it's gonna cost me is um, the same amount as buying cheap tiles, the least nice ones, but I will have beautiful tiles hopefully um, now the first iteration of this i did for the tv show but didn't finish was a tiny 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 bathroom upstairs on the beautiful big bedroom we've got where we had hand painted murals done for it and the tiny bathroom on the side which is still not finished um was um i decided to jazz it up a bit by doing an entire mural, a wall mural, um, 
And because I'm not a major artist, I thought I'd do it in a kind of Art Nouveau stained glass window style. And one night I drew my little picture of what I wanted it to look like. I wanted it to look like you were looking out of a stain through a stained glass window. And I had the peacock, um, because we've got the peacocks and we always have beautiful um, irises. And those are the chestnut trees and those are the Alps in the background. And then from that, I drew a life size. I mean, this is big. These, this is a big mural. <laughs> it's the back of a wall. It's going to be the back of a shower. I drew, drew it out. And because I didn't know anything about painting and glazing and tile making, like the first thing I did was to buy ready-made biscuit fired tiles. So that's tiles that are fired, not been glazed, but they're fired to hardness. Um, and you then paint on top of them with glaze or slip. And I didn't really know anything about this. So I decided to buy, um, I did some research and I bought um, these paints. They're called Stroke and Coat by Mako. Uh, it's an American company, but you can buy it all over the world. And they, they make it for idiots like me who have no idea what's going on. And you just use them like paint and they don't come out the same color. That's the only difference between paint when you fire them. So I did a test, test tile where I painted each one that I had in different numbers of layers. Um, and then on the basis of that, I decided which colors I wanted to use on what. Now, the only flaw in my plan was that each tile takes about two and a half to three hours to paint and you can't really take a break in that time. And since I started it, I had babies and babies don't let you have two to three hours of uninterrupted time. So I'm substantially behind with my mural. But I just, I'll show you a little bit of it. Um, I have, that's a, a finished tile that has been fired um, I believe this is a leg of a peacock stood on a log. So he's around here somewhere. This isn't the finished one. Um, and I need to lay them out and start painting at night or something. You can draw them in on pencil because it burns out. And this is what the, the colours look like before you fire them. I've done partial ones here. And then when they fire, they come up to these colors. So that was a great project, but the things I learned during that were, if you buy pre-fired um, tiles, and if you buy um, these fabulous paints, um, it's all quite expensive. And if you do wonderfully complicated murals, it's extremely time consuming. So I decided to take the next step, which is to make your own tiles. This is substantially cheaper in the long term. It also means you can have much more character in the tiles, this whole um, handmade feeling, which is what I was looking for. Um, but it does take a bit of time. However, I've absolutely loved the process of learning. I've been reading books at night. I've ordered loads and loads of books. I can't do a course here because I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I have taken advice from uh, two wonderful people so far. I've taken advice from Reptile Tiles, who, hand, who make and hand paint their own tiles, who've been very generous with their time. And also Kelly McKay, who um, became a patron of ours. And I spent a good two and a half hours picking her brains the other day. And she really brought so much to life for me. But before I spoke to Kelly, I went on national television, filmed last year, making my first ever set of tiles, which was a, a splashback I did. It's all very dusty because it's a year ago, because I was heavily pregnant at the time. And so I designed a splashback with plain tiles in the middle and then a design going around the edge, which was sort of a vine running around it. And um, I also used, incorporated um, some ideas from a uh, book on medieval designs and logos and motifs um, to put into it because I do love my history a bit. And I carved that in around the edge and I was really pleased at how it came out. There was beautiful variation in the colour with the glaze 
and there was uh, little fingerprints in it. Um, but there were a few things that mean I'm not 100% satisfied. Great for a first go, but if I want to put these on the wall, they're not quite good enough for me. One of the things was that carving took a very long time and uh, wasn't terribly neat. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be, I think, a bit better than this. Um, the other problem I had was that I used spray a spray gun to put the um, glaze on. And although I want some variation, it was too uneven and I struggled with that. Um, so I have, I think, come up with some solutions to that. Uh, but as Kelly told me the other day, um, it's all about testing. We've got to test, test, test. So um, over the next couple of days, I'm going to do some test tiles. I'm going to try some thinner. The big, another big challenge I've got is I have to make them thinner. And that's really difficult because handmade tiles, um, because of the way they are, they curl when you dry them. And it's very difficult to stop them curling and professional tile making companies have huge mechanical presses that stop it. So I'm, I've got to experiment as to how thin I can go without them curling, because obviously you can't put them on a wall if they've curved. So it's gonna be hugely fun. And uh, we're gonna do some testing, do some firing, and then decide uh, on our final design. I'm going to be doing my clay tiles down here in the coach house to begin with because um, it's for a start it's quite cool but it's also very damp which is unusual around here because we have a very dry area and a very dry chateau. I know a lot of people think that it must be a big dark damp chateau but it's not, it's bone dry apart from down here because it's partly buried in the ground. Um, and that may be a problem in future, but for the moment it helps me with my tiles because they need to dry very, very slowly if they're not gonna warp. Um, anyone who saw the latest series of Chateau DIY will have seen me making my first batch of tiles down here um, on this very table. So I'm just gonna kind of recreate my setup. Over the summer, we used this place for um, parties not that many parties but we had a few parties we had one big party for mark a special birthday um and so it's kind of littered with party debris which clement is now taking full advantage of My key piece of equipment it's a roller a slab roller oh what a helpful boy you are thank you sweetheart so the slab roller is one of my most important pieces of equipment at the moment because if you want to make large amounts of tiles um, regularly you need a way to do it quickly and uh, a big slab roller is the ideal way to do it but they cost thousands of euros, pounds, dollars. And uh, until I knew I could definitely do this, I thought I better not spend any more money. But uh, Mark's cousin, who's a potter, knew about a man who makes his own slab rollers and sells them for just a couple of hundred euros. So I've got one. And it's not perfect, but it does enable me to roll some nice, fl consistently flat slabs, not very big ones. Um, so I'm gonna be, that's how I did last year's ones. I am going to be experimenting a little bit about how to potentially use moulds and stuff now as well. Uh, but to start with, I'm going to roll some nice slabs with it. Make pizza. Are you making a pizza? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The associations are hilarious. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've got some different types of clay here um, and I want to try uh, try them because there's different rates of shrinkage and different rates of curling as I was talking about so I'm going to roll a slab from each of them I think we're going to try two different types of clay yeah yeah Mummy. yeah clay Mummy. Not play, no, clay. Mummy. Clay, baby. Yeah. Today I'm just doing experiments. No, sweetie pie, wait a minute. On size and thickness. And how to survive with a child. So, Clement, this one's no grog. Huh? Yeah. No grog on this one. Now, the important thing about having a child around clay is not to have them around dry clay because it's bad to breathe in, but we're not using dry clay today. And it's all nice and clean. So now I have to be a bit noisy with it and bash the air out of it. Ready? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Well done, love. Ready? Go! Well done. You hit that clay. So because this is a very simple device, it works by, um, instead of changing the height of the rollers, you change the height of the uh, piece of wood underneath it. Now this piece of wood isn't the flattest. <laughs> and so once, although th these are my tests, but once I come to do the main ones, I'm gonna get Mark to make me another piece of wood. I just reminded myself that these are the test tiles, so they don't need to be perfect. So here's a slab. What we're doing is we're experimenting. We've got to keep in mind, haven't we, Clemel? Our number one aim, can you do it on your ones, not mine? Our number, our two num, our, our two, <laughs> our number one aim is to work out how thin I can get the tiles without them curling when they dry. And the number two aim is to try sizes and shapes and see how much they shrink. And there's a number three aim is to test slips and glazes and colors and designs. Okay, so there's quite a lot of aims, really. Maybe I should have made more clay. <laughs> Let's just start cutting some clay. Okay. I'm going to have a look at metro style and uh, which are the oblong ones and square ones. Last time, I believe I made meticulous notes in a notebook, but I have no idea where the notebook is. Um, but I believe I did 11 centimeter tiles because the packet on of clay claimed that they were going to shrink by 10% and they didn't actually. And I wanted 10 centimeters. But I do quite like the. Um, the shape of them. So I think I'll try some metro tiles of a similar size. I'm just going to mark them out the corners. Centimeters. Or even yeah, two-handed. Eight. 
Come see. Oh, bravo, my baby. Let go now. There. So I've been using just random kitchen implements because um, I don't have any special uh, clay, really any special clay ones. These are some that I found locally, but we don't have a shop nearby. Um, but I asked Kelly the other day about this and she said pizza cutter is absolutely fine. But what I also found in the cupboard was um, a dough cutter, which might be even better. So I'm gonna give it a go. So it's after lunch uh, and um, I had a chat with Mark during lunch and he wanted to know about certain techniques, whether they were possible or not. I love the confidence he has in me, but sometimes the ambition is a bit too much. <laughs> One of the things he wanted to know about was if we could do kind of the design in the tiles rather than the drawing on of the tiles so in the shape of the tiles so what i've just done it's, it's quite rough but i've cut up a tile into shapes in just geometric shapes and then there's one other technique which is actually something i did want to try myself i'm going to try and do the designs in these using slip this time not engraving not pressing not anything else, I'm just trying slip for this bathroom. But Mark said, because I want quite an organic feel, why don't I try rolling in a, a leaf or something? So I'm going to see how that works. With Clement not being in here, it's been so quiet that I've been able to hear a terrifying sound. We've got a beetle eating one of our beans going crunch 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 I'll do that one first because it looks cool that's rather pretty so I'll make it up a bit That's pretty. I want to try a new technique with the drying, which um, the lovely people behind Reptile Tiles told me about, which was to dry them between um, uh, biscuit-fired tiles, uh, ones that you can buy. So they're porous and they will soak up the water very evenly and very flat. So I'm gonna try that. So I'm going to number each tile and then make a note of what I did for each one. Right, so I now just have to wait. I'm gonna keep checking until they're leather hard, uh, which means that you can still kind of move them, but um, they're likely to snap quite easily. And then I can start doing some slip experimentation.